So I want to show you one of the uh, strongest features about using the Metafusion software, and that is uh, with regard to collecting uh, deductibles and co-payments from your patients and doing it through uh, automatic payment storage and automatic recurring billing. Uh, let's just say that we want to go ahead and look at a patient. The patient happens to be myself. We'll go ahead and look uh, my name up, and here's all of my personal information. There's a, a icon right here that looks like a, uh, a MasterCard, and when you click on it, there's stored payment information. Now, this is a really powerful feature to have uh, in the software, because what it allows you to do is to list a primary and a secondary payment method, and also to set the patient up on automatic uh, recurring payments, uh, and I'll explain that in just a second. The reason this is beneficial is that each time a patient walks in the door, if they owe you money for co-payment or co-insurance, they don't have to write you a check or give you their credit card uh, to swipe. What you can do is store it one time and enter the information. Now, it could either be a credit or a debit card, or they can give you their account information, and you can go ahead and pull it directly from their account if you like. Now, it could be a savings account. It could be a health savings account, uh, something of that nature. You just go ahead and put the patient's uh, information. You'll see that once you put the card number in here, it'll only show you the last four digits uh, after that time. If you want to put a secondary uh, card in here as well, you can go ahead and do that. And then what you can do is you can swap your primary and your secondary payments uh, if you need to, uh, to do so. Now, the reason why this is so important is because every time a pa patient comes in, let's just say that their coinsurance is $30. Uh, what you can do is just ask the patient that each time they come in, is it okay if you just go ahead and charge their coinsurance? And usually it's a convenience to them, so they'll say yes. Also, if the patient has not come in in some period of time, you might just be able to call them up and say, uh, hey, John, uh, there's a $200 balance on your account. Would it be okay if we charge the card that we have on file? And again, it's a convenience. It saves your staff from having to print out bills, to send them out to patients, to keep up on accounts receivable uh, as they go through the, your ARs. When they see that a patient has an outstanding balance and there's a stored payment method here, they can just call them up. You might also uh, have an agreement signed up front as well where the patient agrees to let you withdraw the funds from their account uh, in the event that there is uh, any outstanding balance. Now, I'd still go ahead and call the patient up because, of course, you don't want to uh, upset the patient and just take money out of their account. You know, they, they might need it for food or rent or car payment. But you do have that authorization on file, and, and maybe just let them know that uh, you're just calling them up as a courtesy just to see you know, if, it's, if it's okay to go ahead and do that. So that's uh, the power of having a primary and a secondary payment uh, on file. Now, down below, there's automatic recurring payments. And this is really uh, one of the most powerful features that I can think of in the system and that you can implement today. The reason why is that patients today have... Uh, higher deductibles and co-payments uh, or higher deductibles than they used to have before. And what this allows you to do is to set the patient's larger balance this is up on a periodic repayment over time. So what you would do is you just click on the automatic recurring payment and to check to enable it and you might say the deductible. Now let's say the patient has a thousand dollar deductible. You want to set the first payment up for July 3rd of 2012. Now what I'm going to suggest to you is that you take the money out two days a month. It's going to be either the 3rd or the 17th, whichever is coming up next. So if today's date, you can see up here in the upper right, is June 11th, then what I would do is just have this come out on June uh, 17th. The, re the, or the rationale behind doing this, and one of my uh, uh, doctor clients had told me that he does this and it works well, is the patients get paid on either the 1st, or the 15th, typically, or both. Uh, the, they'll put the money in the account either electronically, it'll go in on the 15th, or they'll deposit it on the 16th to access the money, and the funds will become available on the 17th. So you want to go ahead and withdraw your money at the highest point, or the highest presumed point, that they will have, the highest balance they'll have in their account. Patients will not be offended by this. You're doing them a favor. It's one less thing that they have to worry about. Uh, any of you who have automatic recurring payments for, say, a car or mortgage or any other payment, uh, you know it works out really well. Um, so in this instance right here, let's just say the patient owed you $1,000 and they want to pay you $100 each visit or, or each month. Uh, on the third of every month, you might just change this where it's $100.
and you go ahead and click Save, and the information will be saved in there. Very powerful feature because you can still be collecting your co-payments or co-insurance from the patient, uh, say each visit or at the end of the week or whenever you schedule this with the patients. Maybe they say, you know, can you take these payments out at the end of the week or each time that I come in? But the deductible, which is a larger balance uh, and could be a, a barrier to the patient obtaining treatment, if you take that over a period of time, uh, you'll see that the, uh, uh, the patient will not stop coming in for treatment or uh, avoid coming in for treatment just because of finances. Now, if, if the patient do doesn't have any insurance whatsoever, you might tell them that you recommend uh, 30 treatments and they're going to be, uh, let's just say, $50 a treatment and it's $1,500, again, you can still apply the same thing here where maybe it's 10 months and it's $150, or you can ask the patient, how much would you like to pay now? And you know, maybe they say, okay, I'll pay $500 now, and you, you go ahead and set this back up. If you go ahead and set 10 patients up every month for $100, it's going to be $1,000. Now, at the end of 10 months, that's going to be $10,000. The doctors who do this tell me uh, very often that they have their overhead paid or nearly paid on the third of each month. So very powerful feature in chiropractic today and in other uh, forms of healthcare. Deductibles and copayments often go uncollected, which is a big compliance issue, number one, but it also uh, creates a cash crunch today as well.